The following sponsor program is paid for by Twin Fin Media. Good morning, Del Marva. Welcome to Coastalini. I'm your host, Michael Sprouse, and we are broadcasting live from the incredible Browse About Books, located at 133 Rehoboth Avenue in the heart of downtown Rehoboth Beach, Delaware. You are in the house of Sprouse, and we're going to take a jump to the creative side of the surf. You can check out our live video stream. This entire broadcast live on our Facebook page is happening this very second, facebook.com slash coastalae. All this is possible thanks to our amazing sponsors, the residences of Lighthouse Cove, Dewey Beach, Cove Ray Wine Bar and Restaurant, Charles Messina Plumbing, Electric and HVAC, Sprouse Thomas and Real Estate Associates, and Peninsula Fine Art and Custom Framing in Lewis. Whew, that's a lot to say on a Saturday morning. <laughs> I felt a little out of breath. I, so I park and I walk to browse about because I'm trying to get it's a mile from where I park and a mile in here because I, you know, yeah, you got to get to you got to a point and you got to like get a little exercise going. But it's nice. It's beautiful. It's sunny out there. The, everyone's out and about. There's a lot going on in Robeth, a lot going on in Lewis, a lot going on in Delmarva because season has kicked in. And I have two of my first guests here, two lovely, wonderful people from. Lewis and Bloom. I have Marilyn Vi and Diane Stevens. They're both chairs with Lewis and Bloom. It's a phenomenal nonprofit organization that works to make Lewis more beautiful. Good morning, ladies. How are you? Good morning. Thanks for having us. Oh, you're welcome. I'm glad you guys are here. We ran into each other on the way down we here. We did. <laughs> <laughs> both right have the, the tops down. <laughs> like, hey, how's it going? <laughs> So Lewis and Bloom, for, for I mean, you, you guys have a lot of attention. A lot of people, when, when I mention Lewis and Bloom in a conversation, people are like, oh, yes, I, they're the people that are always out planning around Lewis. You, 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 you beautify Lewis by just one of the many things you do. Mm -hmm. but, but you take public spaces and you create beautiful gardens that, that seem to be really year-round and, and bloom structure in nature. But, but give us a little nutshell description of, of the group for people that may be unfamiliar with it for our listeners. Okay, so we started... 2002. Two. Um, there were seven people started Lewis and Bloom. Um, we've now grown to 260 members. Wow. Um, and we are trying to do year-round plantings. In the fall, we planted 21,000 tulips. We've planted, I don't know how many thousands of annuals this year. We decorate Second Street and some other areas for the holiday season and this year, we're going to try a new um, decorating committee to decorate in the fall, too. So oh, fantastic. We, we really don't have any downtime. Um, we have a quite active membership, um, and we love what we do. So now, can, can anyone become a member of Lewis anyone and Bloom? Anyone can join. Um, you can go on our website, lewisandbloom.org. There's a way to sign up online. You can attend our meetings. It's the second Tuesday of every month at 4 o'clock in the Lewis Library. Um, we meet every month except August and January, and you're welcome to come to a meeting even without joining to see what we do and what we're all about. That's phenomenal. So so how many spaces around Lewis? I, I know it's difficult probably, but but <laughs> have you seen how we many actually, have Lewis actually, and Bloom really got in there? We actually have a number. Yeah. We have 28 parks, um, baskets, corners that we do, the corner in front of Dogfish Head in. Um, so 28 different spaces in and around Lewis wow. that we maintain. And that's just in Lewis, that's in Lewis, Lewis proper, proper alone. Mm -hmm. Wow. Mm -hmm. So th that's what you do. You know, I, I live in downtown Lewis, and I'm, one of my favorite things to do is to every morning you sort of go on a little walk. Mm -hmm. And you can't go on a walk throughout downtown Lewis without seeing th these wonderful gardens. That, that And you, you'll see the sign usually, you know, mm -hmm. Lewis and Bloom. This is here right. from Lewis and Bloom. And the thing about the, these wonderful gardens, uh, especially in season, they're so balanced color-wise, structure-wise, texture-wise, that the, everything about them, it just, it, I think it's one of the, one of the, the essences of, of Lewis that makes it such a special, unique visual place, in addition to its history. And now it seems like Lewis and Bloom has become part of that history mm -hmm. because of what they've done. And I just think that's a wonderful experience. And so the, the, your members must be thrilled to be part of this. Our members really enjoy what they're doing. Um, on any given day, probably, you can see members like 7 o'clock in the morning deadheading, maintaining these areas. Um, and we do it because we, we enjoy it, and we take pride in what we do. Why is it important for, for any town, really, but to, to have a group like Lewis and Bloom, just dedicated volunteers that, that want to help to promote the, the natural sense of beauty in, in a town? 
Well, the fact that we beautify Lewis encourages visitors to come, and I think that's important for any small town. It, um, it helps the merchants thrive. They love what we do for the downtown area. So anytime that we can do our volunteer work in the community, I think everybody benefits. Fantastic. Now, now where did the, where does the, it's a nonprofit organization. Correct. So plans are expensive, mm-hmm. you know, can be. So, mm-hmm. so, so where, how does that happen? And where, where does the, the group get its funding and, and, and to be able to, to afford? We, we have membership dues, of course. Uh, very inexpensive. It's very affordable for anybody who wants to join. It's $25 per person, $40 for a family membership, and that's good for the year. Oh, wow. That is um, a good price. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> we get um, a lot of donations from just people who want to encourage us to keep beautifying the town. Um, we have um, sponsors that help us plant the, um, provide the money to plant the gardens. Um, I don't know if we can mention who they are. Sure, why not? <laughs> I say it's okay. I'll throw, I'll throw a shout out <laughs> to it, Shell Brothers. Almost, there you go. Well, they, yeah, <clears throat> but it's also almost every um, business in Lewis mm-hmm. donates a certain time mm-hmm. of the year they do. to support us. So we actually thank the whole community yeah. for their support. Fantastic. Now, do you have a, a big annual fundraiser or are there a variety of different? We, we have several. At the tulip celebration, we do a tulip sale. We do a member's plant sale where our members donate plants to us and then we sell them to the membership. We do a um, holiday wreath sale and a Christmas market. Nice. So those are our big fundraisers mm-hmm. and didn't there was just some type of program an exchange program in italy wasn't Correct. there so yes. tell us about that i thought that oh. was very exciting i gave, I, I gave a little it tease was, on my facebook page about it it was but. um the most memorable thing i think i've ever done in my entire wow. life it was wow. really quite wonderful 14 of us from the membership flew over to italy at our own expense we this was not supported by anybody mm. other than our own <laughs> yeah, our desire own people, and willing to, to make this happen um we stayed in Cervia, which is a beach town not unlike lewis um, oh. it's a small beach town on the adriatic sea um with a canal that runs through the middle of the town separates part of the town from the other part of the town um we were invited because we won a um an award from Communities in Bloom, which is an international organization. They came and judged us last year, spent two days in July um, judging our gardens, all kinds of spaces in Lewis, all, all the way down to how beautiful our trash enclosures are. I mean, they looked wow. at everything. Wow, yeah. that's pretty, um, that's pretty thorough we, we judging. We were awarded, like yeah, the most beautiful <laughs> medium-sized town in the world. Wow. And because of that recognition, we were invited to plant a garden in Chervia. And Chervia has 67 public gardens scattered all about the town. So it's not just in one area. Mm. You could be walking down the street, and in the middle of the, of the median, there might be a garden that's planted by a, a European country. Um, so 67 gardens that get planted every spring and get dug up every fall and replanted the following spring. Wow. Some of them are permanent, but most mm. of them are not. So they're replanted every year. They're maintained by the municipality of Chervia. There's seven or eight students, I guess horticulture students who are on this committee and they're in charge of maintaining the gardens because we of course can't go back and forth to Italy. Sure, to I don't and understand. I mean, I'd right love not? to, but you know, it's not possible. So they the do, life of Riley they do all is the traveling back and forth over there. And so we had a wonderful time. That's we great. spent two days um, in different types of weather. It was <laughs> Rainy, rain, it was sun, oh, it wow. was muddy. It was, it was beautiful. It was, it was quite memorable. So we are, we're so grateful for the opportunity. And were, were you able to to connect with some of the gardeners that were there and and, yes. and just talk about different input yes. and, and one ideas? Of the other, one of the other winners of the Community in Blooms Challenge last year was um, a town from Castle Gar, British Columbia, and they were planting a small space right across the sidewalk from where we were. We were in the public square, one of the older parts of the city. And uh, we got to know them and develop some friendships and have become Facebook friends with some mm-hmm. of them. Oh, that's phenomenal. We were assigned an Italian host who is actually a Communities in Bloom judge. He did not judge our garden last year, but he is a Community in Bloom's judge. Right. And he and his wife live in Italy, so they were assigned to us. Because, oh, of course, nice. none of us speak Italian. <laughs> so he, he stayed with us the whole time. He stayed in the same hotel. We ate meals together. Wow. He took us on a train trip to Ravenna. Uh, which is a mosaic, I think the mosaic capital of Italy. Mm-hmm. It was absolutely stunning. 
And then we took a little tour of the town by foot, walked at least 10 miles, ten miles. Uh, yeah. seeing all the all the gardens that wow. were scattered about the town of Chervia. That sounds so phenomenal. Was, that that must have been really just an ideal So this experience. festival has been going on for 47 years. Oh, wow. Yeah, so and Chervia is known for their mm-hmm. garden festival all summer long. So yeah. it really was an honor to be invited to go there we were the first american city to ever be invited congratulations yeah. that's quite an honor it i mean is. it really is it and is. and it sounds like there, there was quite a a, a, a regimented you know a, a burning hoops you had to leap through to be able to make that happen and, and you guys did it so kudos to, to that that's a lot of hard work you know and we were and actually invited back next year fantastic so, mm-hmm. Do you see Lewis and Blip? Now, I don't know. I, I think I was I was uh, in a conversation with one of the other members the other day, and they'd mentioned that um, communities around the area are, are sort of trying to create their own version because Lewis and Blipman has been so successful. Mm-hmm. Do you see that happening? Do you see people eventually getting together and creating sort of co- Rehoboth and Bloom oh. is an example of okay. a spinoff of Lewis and Bloom. Fantastic. Um, Warren Goldie and I met with Cindy Lovett last year, and she picked our brain on how to start an organization. And we just walked downtown here, and the pots are beautiful that they've they've done. That's great. That's great. It becomes a sort of an uh, infectious type of wonderful thing where people mm-hmm. are like, look what they've done in this town. Let's do the same thing here. Exactly. You know. So, are you do you focus on or as as part of the organization? We'll get to the point where they say. Um, you know, we could have peers sessions where we can give other people that are interested in this. I mean, would you proactively be interested in people from Milford, other towns reaching out and saying, how can we start something like that here? If anybody would like to contact us, sure, they can do it through our website. Um, I know Warren actually met with people in St. Michael's mm-hmm. about starting mm. a garden club. Um, we had, during our tulip celebration, we had a group from Bethany come and we gave them a tour of our gardens. Oh, so, fantastic. Yeah, we're now, if someone's new to the area, and of course, you know, a lot of people think of, of, of this, the Robert Lewis, Dewey, Beth, is the 55 plus side. A lot of people end up <laughs> sort of moving here from, I'm giving it up in the big city, I'm coming <laughs> to the beach. It sounds like Lewis and Bloom would be an organization where people could, that maybe had an interest in gardening, would want to meet other people and, and like minded. Is it that type of very inclusive, welcome, join us type definitely, of organization? Definitely, definitely. Mm-hmm. And even if you're not into gardening, we have a carpentry group. We have a communications group. So, yeah, we're looking for all types of people. You don't have to just be a master gardener. Um, we all learn by what we what we do. Most of us what are not plant. master gardeners. No. We're just... Just have an interest to get together. Dig, yeah. We love to dig yeah. in the We dirt. even have a watering crew that gets out in the middle of the night oh, and waters okay. some of wow. the pots that aren't yeah. irrigated. Oh, that sounds like fun. <laughs> uh, yes. I remember when I, you, a, a few years ago, I'd get up really early in the morning. I'm walking around down. There was always this guy from Lewis and Bloom on, with this long sort of reaching, watering yeah, his that pots. Was probably that was Warren. Warren. Yeah, that's yeah, he's, like, he's our founder. Oh, okay. Well, do, he was very could... intently and focused on that because I, oh, I'm not going to get all caught up in this hose here. The guy was like, I'm watering these plants. You know, yeah, it was a lot he's, of fun. He's, uh, n- we couldn't do anything that we do without wow. him. Wow. He's yeah, fantastic. He... And he's still really active and has some wonderful ideas for us. So. That's phenomenal. We mm-hmm. thank him. So what is the next big problem? Well, th- are you co- let me actually just jump into that. Are you connected to Art and Bloom by any chance? Because so, I know that's a relatively new organization. Art and Bloom Lewis. is a committee of Lewis. Oh, okay, okay. Mm-hmm. And that's focusing on publicly installed Public art. artwork, mm-hmm. correct? Mm-hmm. And they, so I know that one of the things, uh, one of the first things I think was with the Silent the Sentinels, Sentinels is beautiful right, uh, wind library. kinetic sculptures mm-hmm. of the library. Right. They the, just had an unveiling on um, the Manhattan Fish factory uh, fisherman Mm -hmm. on the Beacon Motel. We just had a a mural painted from top to bottom. Damon Plow's mural. It's phenomenal. It is. It's beautiful. That's that's one of the best murals I've seen. And I'm, you know, I hail from D.C. where there's great murals all Mm -hmm. over the place. Mm -hmm. But I'm telling you that that mural is is, is by far could hold its own. It's a gloriously beautiful mural. He did a phenomenal. I tried to get him on the radio show, but he's very shy about speaking. Oh, <laughs> a lot. No. And they, but they you are hear that, selling, David, I'm going to make that happen. <laughs> they are selling his print in Peninsula yes, Gallery. Yes, which is phenomenal. Yeah, yeah that, that's a, I, I, I highly suggest that everyone go down there and check out that mural. And while you're in Lewis, you know, look around and you'll see. 
Uh, you have little signs that you put up we with do. every one of your spaces, right? Correct? White signs that says "This Garden Maintained by Lewis and." Blum. That's phenomenal mm-hmm. because they're everywhere and they're so they're so beautiful. What what is the next? Do you have a, a, a big project that you're able to speak to without giving way too much, or or is there any? As of, <laughs> as of right now, um, we have we're trying to we're working with the city to. Um, Beautify the bump outs in on Second Street with planters, um, self watering planters, and have flowers and you know things Fantastic. in it. Um, but we're still working logistics out with the city. Um, other than that, we we really have our a full plate, so we're happy to maintain what yeah. we have. And you, you, you can have, you, there's no cutoff on members. You're like the more, no. the merrier, right? Yeah, the more, no. the merrier. When, when I joined Lewis and Bloom six years ago, there were 42 members. Oh. And now we have 260. Wow. What are you going to, you're going to run out of room. You're going to need to. Well, <laughs> that, to that is an issue. Right. Right. At our last meeting, we had 83 people. Wow. Um, at the library. And, so. and they just, as you said, you don't have to live in Lewis to be a member of Lewis and Bloom. No, no. Yeah. We have some members from Milton. Um, and you don't have to live in Lewis proper. I'd say over half of our membership comes from outside of city limits. I see. Have, have you ever thought about, uh, you know, because Lewis seems is expanding. There is, of course, Lewis proper and, you know, mm-hmm. downtown. Have, have projects have been on the horizon where they would maybe move them beyond the parameters of, of downtown Lewis? Or, or is that just a problematic thing? Right now I think of, we're concentrating mm-hmm. – on downtown. On where there's a lot of public proper. spaces. Yeah. Um, yeah. Like I said, we I think we have enough that <laughs> we don't want to overextend on. ourselves. Yeah. One, of, one of the yeah. things that I'm not sure a lot of people know about is our children's learning garden. No, I'm not familiar have, with that. Um, Tell us about in that. In Stango Park, uh, we have a little plot. It's um, full of tomatoes, lettuce, herbs, flowers, peppers. We have uh, activities on Mondays and Fridays in the summer while school is out. On Mondays, we do Story Hour, where the children's librarian, Jen Noonan, comes out and reads stories to the kids uh. on the lawn, and then we let the kids go into the garden and pick vegetables if there's things that are ready. If not, we let them water, do a little bit of weeding. Um, on Fridays, we have an activity. Usually, it's a, a food activity or a music activity. We've got the butterfly people coming in. We've got the bee people coming in. The Lewis Beekeeping Club is going to be there in a few weeks to talk about the importance of bees as pollinators. Um, so that goes on all summer long, too, Mondays and Fridays. So anybody who's interested in that, it starts at 1030 on Mondays for story hour and 1030 on Fridays for activity. That's hour. phenomenal. And anyone can come to that with anybody their kids? Anybody can come yeah. to that. We get a That's lot of great. visitors in the summertime because we advertise in the bags that go to the rentals mm-hmm. companies. Oh, sure. So families, when they come to the area, can look in their bags and see Excellent. what's mm-hmm. going on. I love the, the fact that you're getting children involved mm-hmm. in this because, mm-hmm. well, you know, they're the ones that are going to be t- become the tomorrow's adults yeah. and are going to be exactly. dealing with a lot right. of these yeah. important. We're issues. starting early, How, training them. Uh, as Lewis in, in general, uh, because, I mean, you, you, the Lewis and Bloom has brought so much wonderful f- uh, flower and, fa- and fauna into the area. How is it doing bee butterfly population-wise com- comparatively, if you know? I mean, if not, it, it's fine, but now I'm curious because um, those are major, those are important issues to be concerned about. Our beekeeping club is really working to promote the importance of bees as pollinators. And I think the more they get out there and advertise that fact, the more people are going to be in tune. We actually have one of our gardens is a pollinator garden. Oh, we really? Specifically, we have two. Two, one at Canal oh, Point right. Park and one in uh, George H. P. Smith yeah. Park. So there's two pollinator gardens. And, of course, we try to plant plants that are going to encourage butterflies and bees. So. It's, um, so you think we're doing pretty pretty good down there? Doing, we're doing a pretty good job. <laughs> I'm seeing a lot of dragonflies, which yes. I like. Yes. yes. Because they eat mosquitoes, and I like the fact that they do that. So I guess that's a good thing, that's right? right. Mm-hmm. And the ladybugs. We do a ladybug release oh. program in the children's learning garden in a few weeks. That's and, phenomenal. Uh, they also will attack the aphids and things yeah, like and that. Yeah, they're good so. for gardens. That's mm-hmm. good. Well, it's good to know. I didn't know that, that you had these these other extra yeah. programs for kids. I love that. I think mm-hmm. that's so commendable. And I'm, I'm sure hopefully there's a lot of parents right now. I'm like, I know what we're doing Monday at 1030. <laughs> there we go. That's right. Take your kids that's to right. the garden and learn yeah. something. And it does start this Monday. It does. It's this coming Monday. It's the first time for the, for the summer. That's so phenomenal. On Is Monday. it every Monday? Every Monday until the end of August. Wow, that's, that's great. That's great. So yeah. anyone, the best way to get more information on Lewis and Bloom would be to to do what? Go to our website, um, lewisandbloom.org, and um, it's everything is listed by um, 
like Children's Learning Garden has their own page. Art and Bloom has their own page. On the front page, it has a calendar of events um, for each month. And um, Beauty Spot Award is oh, now Oh, yes, on. I forgot. How could I forget about <laughs> the Beauty Spot yeah, Award? <laughs> <laughs> As a matter of fact, for that sign's right in front of my house. Know, yes. Michael Sprouse's <laughs> and his friend George. Yeah, we won the Beauty Spot the Award. Beauty yeah. Spot Award winners. So I this can't year. tell you what a surprise. Yeah. I was quite. I was very honored about that. I'm not kidding. It was mm-hmm. like, wow. People are like, ooh, you've got the Beauty Spot Award. Like, yes, we do. There we it is. In a beautiful yard. Thank you so much. Mm-hmm. And every, people can do every month. That, so, that's yes, through the summertime. This is something we started. I want to say three years ago, um, honoring a garden Mm -hmm. or a spot in lewis anybody can nominate somebody Mm -hmm. that's also on our website so you don't have to be nominating some people you don't have to be a lewis and bloom member to nominate somebody um i think that's a great great idea i love that so include it's so great it's just sharing the wealth you know and you you get to have a lewis and bloom beauty spot award sign on your front yard and you get a little gift certificate that's yes, right. You do. So one of my yeah. favorite little Whartons. I'm giving them a shout out too. See, we're <laughs> shouting everybody out That's here right. on That's the radio. Right. I, I want to thank you so much. I know we only have a couple of minutes left before we're going to go to our first break. Thank you, ladies, so much. I think what you do is so admirable. I think it's such a great group, and I'm so happy to be able to give it a shout on the radio. I'll be doing it again soon. Um, I want to remind people that it's lewisandbloom.org, and you also have a very good Facebook page. We do. We do. So people that, that, that just active. love that social media, mm-hmm. yeah. Mm-hmm. you got to get – in fact, when I was there setting up, the, you, immediately, some was – who was it? Was it you? I don't know who, who's – Who's on the other side? Is it you? <laughs> Great. You're right there. Right there, Diane. It's like, like responding immediately. I, I really appreciate that. So, again, I want to thank my guest today. Uh, they're, they're, you're both chair members of, right. of, of, right. of the We're organization. One of the, one of the, of the three, three of us. Okay, fantastic. And the other one was is, uh, Sue, Sue Crawford. Sue, yeah. So I spoke to you on the phone yes. right. the other day. Mm-hmm. And it's uh, Marilyn Vi. Am I pronouncing that correctly? You Vi? are perfect. I like the Vi. It's a cool <laughs> name. Is that Italian? It Vi. Is. I like that. And Diane Stevens. Correct. Did you, did you have something to do with the, the trip to Italy? Is that what? Cause, cause I did not. <laughs> I did not. Um, you don't speak Italian. You would have to tell you last night. I would love, I love Italy. I oh, would love, it was I would amazing. Love, Maybe if life. you join Lewis and Bloom, you can come with us next year. I can go check that out. I would <laughs> love that. we got about 60 seconds left. Ladies, thank you so much. Keep up the good work. I'm going to try to uh, go by there uh, Monday. I think that would be a great little story and maybe take some photos or something for Facebook. Mm-hmm. Sure. I, great. I highly recommend that if, if, if parents are looking for something for their kids to do. Absolutely. I think school is out now, right? School. It is school. In most places. Out. My grandson yeah. doesn't get out till next Wednesday. Oh, <laughs> we'll have to wait a little bit, but I yeah. think everyone's going to have a yeah. great time there, um, without a doubt. I mean, we just got a, a couple of seconds left is what I keep getting from Billy. Every time I say we're out of time, it seems like <laughs> I'm still talking because I haven't heard my cue music come in. Lewis and Bloom. ORG. Um, very quickly, who makes the decisions about the plans that get picked for that? We have an annual committee. Um, Warren Goldie chairs it, and then there's probably 10, 12 of us mm-hmm. that put input in as to color schemes, type of plants, um, and the same with the tulips. Oh, nice. Because tulip you guys are doing a great job with that. I They've mean, already the started colors planting, are beautiful. or planning, rather, the tulips that they'll be digging uh. into the ground in uh, October. October, November. That's phenomenal. It's yeah. exciting. It's all exciting stuff. Of course, we love the, the tulips there um, that you have. And, and, and you're also, are you part of the big tulip festival that we do every year? Well, the chamber hosts that. But yes, it wouldn't be without all the tulips that we plant. Wow. Exactly. And how many tulips did you say you 21,000. 21,000 tulips. How long did that take? Um, um, that was over a week or two. Wow. But we week. also do a tulip dig when the tulips oh, are yeah. done. And they're gone in less Here's than an Here's my outro music. Well, speaking of less than an hour, <laughs> thank you, ladies, for coming here. We're going to be you. back, and then we'll talk more about, about that the next time I have you on the air. Don't go anywhere. We're on Coastal Lane. I'm your host, Michael Sprouse. We'll be back with Brian Clark. Don't go anywhere, folks. Actually, we're streaming live on the Internet. Listen to Delaware 105.9 live.